All right, guys, welcome to our final part in our full scale anniversary edition battle reenactment of the Battle of Marathon. You can hear the horns blowing out there. Uh, we are heading over to the north end of the Persian camp where we are beginning to cut off their escape route to their ships on the beach. Looks like we are crushing these guys out there. Now there's only about 5,000 Persian troops left. We're seeing about 2,500 of them right in front of us. We're going to see the other 2,500 in the next quarter's worth, uh, or quarter hour worth of the battle. And these troops are desperate to find an escape route. They are trying desperately to break open the Athenian pincer movement, enclosing both wings of the Persian camp. Buy more time for some of their companions or non combatants to get onto the transport ships and GTFO from the Peloponnese. Now, since we are on the north end, you're going to see our commander, I believe this is Militas. Uh, I think that was the commander for Athens during the battle. The Polemarchus, uh, which was the rank, the head rank of uh, armies in Athens, the head of all armies, the uh, general of the armies, if you will. But uh, not sure if that helps. What's weird is my uh, iPad records, I think, a little bit darker than what you guys end up seeing. So it might just be what I'm looking at or the angle I'm watching it from. I'm kind of watching it almost looking straight down because I'm watching my computer screen. Uh, but we are closing in. Looks like over here, Persians may be trying to go for a desperate assassination attempt on our Polemarchus. But it looks like that did not work.
form in a nice little V shape here. So if any more Persians try to make any sally out attempts, they'll be carving themselves up on our spear tips. We're going to go ahead and start moving our troops forward, getting prepared to launch our assault against this end of the Persian camp. We have to get some more uh, sweet ambiance music from the Mediterranean Sea for you guys going on in the background. Little uh, Mediterranean waves crashing on the rocky shore. Thought that was appropriate since we are fighting outside of Marathon, Hellenic Republic, modern day Greece. We do also have a Patreon, if you guys are interested, you can enter the link in the video description below. We also have an online store, get excited. History, themed, apparel, home decor, and accessories. You guys can head to uh, the link in the video description below, get your history themed gear. And here we go, we are making our final assault in the Persian camp now. At least with this section of the army. Looks like we've got the uh, Persian Brigadier General falling back, but he did make a pretty valiant stand there. Maybe just trying to get back into the uh, protection of some more Persian troops out there. Looks like we might be just about ready to take that guy out. And it looks like he has fallen. The battle is getting desperate for the Persians. You can see him getting some good hits in on my boys.
All right, and we are going to go ahead and head on over to the final quarter's worth of this battle. We're going to go head on over to the southern flank. Where we're going to see the last of our uh, assaults against Persian camps here on the beaches outside of Marathon. So we are utilizing, uh, by the way, some of the uh, Athenian center troops that are coming back to the fight. Uh, obviously, we have gone a little bit, uh, ooh, a little bit of a pause here. Uh, we saw in the last hour the use of the Athenian light infantry, the Peltis, over on the far uh, right. Well, those guys are withdrawn from the battle. We don't want to bring them into the camp. Uh, they're not really suited for that kind of combat. So we're bringing up some of the troops that were fighting in the Athenian center, and we're going to utilize them here in the battle. Take out the last of the Persian camps. This is going to be it. Now, the Persians did get many of their ships and most of their cavalry off the beat, but uh, apparently... Uh, at least according to some of the accounts, the Greeks were so, um, I guess, just fast, just so effective at defeating the Persian infantry, trying to hold them back, that they were able to actually reach some of the Persian ships before they got off the beach. And uh, I don't know if they set fire to them or they just... Uh, kind of got on board and started fighting the crews on board, but uh, either way, some of the Persian ships were not able to escape the battle. Drink on hit that pause button. Good uh, reminder to drink some water today. Uh, but uh, we are talking about ancient Greece, so we're looking for maybe a little red wine, maybe some pitted olives, you know, some uh, almonds, some uh, nice fresh feta cheese, maybe a little spada copita, some baklava, feeling some moussaka. Little Euro action. I think that's the whole menu on every Greek restaurant. Maybe get some of those pita chips, those toasted pita chips. God, I love those things. Oh, they're so good. <laughs> some figs, you know, some dates, pomegranate seeds. Whatever you're snacking preferences are. We actually don't discriminate, by the way, against your snacking preferences. If you are a pistachio eater, or if you are a pistachio ice cream eater, all snacks are welcome during these uh, binge watches of our full-scale battle reenactments. Kettle corn, cheesy corn, Cheez-Its, whatever you want to eat, whatever you want to drink, just sit back and enjoy the full-scale marathon reenactment. Uh, now, by the way, in our uh, scaled back version of this battle, we did talk about the marathon race. So if you're unfamiliar, following the Athenian victory at the Battle of Marathon, they sent a runner to go warn Athens that the Persian Navy, or at least the bulk of it, managed to escape the beach. And so the intent was for the runner to warn Athens that the Persian Navy might be coming. And as the story goes, the Persian runner ran the roughly 25-ish miles from Marathon to Athens, declared 
in a very exhausted breath, Nike, which is the Greek word for victory, and then collapsed from exhaustion and could no longer say anything else. He died. So the first person to complete a marathon literally died. <laughs> uh, luckily for Athens, the Persian Navy did not show up. They instead withdrew from the campaign and ended their first invasion of Greece at the Battle of Marathon. Uh, and so as a result, that's where we get the, the, the marathon race now. It's, uh, I think it's like something like 26.3 miles, I want to say. Um, it's the, the length that the original marathon runner ran to get from Marathon to Athens. So shout out to any marathon runners out there. Keeping history alive through sport. I love it. That's how I got my career. I'm literally a sports writer and historian. Very neat combo. And I love when they intermix. Speaking of my, uh, speaking of intermixing ancient Greek history and sport, uh, if you guys aren't subscribed to my Patreon, I recently announced my next big research trip is going to be about the Horean Games, which were the women's events at the ancient Greek Olympics. And there's some historical debate about whether they existed at all. So I am currently fundraising with my Patreon to uh, get the funding I need to travel to several different sites in modern day Greece to investigate whether the Horean Games really existed. Um, so if you guys are interested in ancient Greek history, ancient sports, sports history, all of the above, Head over to my Patreon. There's a link in the video description below, like I said earlier. And uh, get signed up. Help me fundraise for this really cool, uh, literally and figuratively groundbreaking investigation into the uh, the Horean Games. I think I'm going to have a lot of fun with it. You can, uh, you can bet I'm going to eat a lot of Spotacopita while I'm over there. It's one of my favorite foods. I love Greek food. Wanted to go to Greece for a long time because I am a huge nerd for ancient Greek history. As you can probably tell because of all the full-scale battle reenactments I've made, the only one with behind-the-scenes footage about ancient Greek weapons and armor is this one. <laughs> Or about uh, weapons, you know, historical weapons. Now. I don't have any, like, Civil War rifles or anything or muskets or uniforms. Which is why you didn't, or, you know, like, uh, Napoleonic stuff. So you didn't see it for those battles. But uh, if you got it, flaunt it. As the, uh, the guys at the producers famously said. So I'm excited to get over to Greece uh, once this giant pandemic is over and uh, dig up some cool historical sporting artifacts. Speaking of digging up, though, it looks like we are digging our way into the Persian camp. This is the final outpost of the Persians still on land. So fire... Uh, once we defeat the Persians in this camp, the battle is over. By the way, if you, uh, you guys are noticing these uploads at weird times of the day, uh, we are doing the anniversary edition. So what that means is each section of this playlist will be available to watch based on what time of day it is in Greece. So this part of the battle that start at, uh, I believe this section of the battle started about 11 a.m., it's going to be available to watch at approximately 11 a.m. Athens time. 
on uh, September 12th, since the battle occurred on September 12th. Though I will say there is some uh, debate over that as well. Uh, so there's some debate among historians that uh, the date for the battle, obviously they didn't use the word September for that time of year. Uh, I think the official ruling was like a couple days after a full moon in like so many days after the first day of summer or whatever. Um, so there's a debate over that. Uh, and the reason for that is whose date was being used. The Athenian calendar was one month, uh, I believe, behind the Spartan calendar. So if we use the Spartan calendar, the battle may have actually happened on August 12th, but if we use the Athenian calendar, the battle happened on September 12th. Um, so this battle happened either August 12th or September 12th by our modern calendar counting system. Uh, but most historians agree with the September 12th count because that's what the Athenian calendar would set the date at. Uh, but that being said, we don't need to talk about when the battle started because the battle has now ended. Guys, that is it. This is the end of our full-scale anniversary edition battle reenactment of the Battle of Marathon. I want to thank you all for watching it. If you watched the whole playlist, thank you so much. Uh, if you liked this section of the battle, go ahead and hit the like button. If you want to uh, stay up to date on all of our battle reenactments, scaled back and to scale, hit that subscribe button. And uh, I will say, next month we are doing a full-scale battle reenactment for Galgamela. Uh, but if there are other full-scale battles from, and I would say as of right now, anywhere from uh, the Bronze Age up until the U.S. Civil War, nothing past 1900. Uh, but if there's any full-scale battles you want me to reenact... Let me know in the comments below which battles you'd like to see, and I will <clears throat> see if I can fit that into my calendar. Uh, Spartan or Athenian. Oh, I joke. Uh, but guys, that's it. Thank you for watching.